Hey everybody, welcome back to AV Astronomy. Aaron here. And if this is your first time watching, thanks for stopping by. So for tonight's video, I wanted to talk about the Iris Nebula. This has been one of the most challenging nebulas I've ever imaged. Really challenging target altogether. Um, there's, there's so, it's very difficult to bring out a lot of the detail that surrounds this nebula. And it really, honestly, requires a lot more integration time than I was able to give it thus far. But I'm going to show you guys some of the editing techniques I used on this particular image and um, using Photoshop. But also, um, I wanted to mention that I believe with targets like this, programs like Pix and Sight, at least from what I've seen, do a do they just do a better job in pulling out the dust lanes uh, the interstellar dust that surrounds faint targets like this if you go on sites like astrobin and type in iris nebula you'll see results that are just complete you know eye popping i mean just ridiculous the amount of detail they pull out in the interstellar dust the dark lanes and dark dark matter dark nebula that surrounds the the blue iris um, of this of this target here so I did the best I could with the hours I was able to get this is only about four hours integration time at the angle of view I used I did use the GT 71 William optics refractor which I love imaging with but for this particular target I think that the RC actually would have done better at least for for me and, and what I was trying to achieve out of this so if the skies clear up, maybe I'll get a chance to have another go at it uh, before it dips out of view for the rest of the season with the 8-inch RC. But for now, this is what I got going on. So let's go take a closer look and start some editing. All right, guys, here we go. So I have got my stacked image. Like I said before, this is about four hours of data stacked in Deep Sky Stacker. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, I've got some other tutorials I'll put in the description that covers stacking in Deep Sky Stacker. But let's go ahead and get started with this. So as always, the first thing I like to do, duplicate the layer. And let's go ahead and do a curves adjustment on this. Now I'm using some presets that I installed. Uh, these arc sign stretches. These are color preserving stretches. They do a much better job than a standard stretch. Okay. And if you haven't used those before and are wondering where to get them, here's a link to the site. And actually, if you just type in uh, Shark Melly Arc Sign Stretch in Google, it'll pull up the link. So uh, initial stretch I usually go for 30 or 100. Let's just do 100 and see what we get. Okay. So let's flatten that out. And actually, I drizzled this image, which means it super sampled it, and it's huge. It's like five, 600 megabytes. I'm going to change the size just to make this a little easier to edit down to, there we go, 20 by 13, 300 DPI. Now it's only 137 megs, and a lot, oops, a lot quicker to go through these actions here. All right, so what we're going to do now is duplicate the layer again. Let's do a levels adjustment. Let's bring those levels back. There we go. Let's flatten it out. Duplicate. And let's do another stretch on this. But actually, before we do that, in order to help preserve the color, every time you stretch, even with these color preserving stretches, it helps save the color, but it doesn't completely eliminate the color loss you get every time you stretch an image. Let's go ahead and add some color back into this. We're going to use a mask. You're going to find that I like to use masks a lot because that allows you to edit specific areas of your image, which is crucial in getting the most out of your image. We're going to go highlights because we were, we're wanting to preserve and go to select, modify, expand. We'll do two pixels. We're wanting to preserve the star color, but we're really trying to preserve at this point. So we've made our selection. And we're going to make a mask out of this. Okay, so hit mask right here. And let's take a look at the mask by alt, left click. And that's those are all the areas that are going to be preserved in the color preserving stretch. So now with that mask in place, control U, color saturation. We're going to just boost it up to about 30, 35. Okay. Change this to a color layer. 
and go down and click on your background layer and do curves control M and what you're going to do is change this value to 245 this value remains 255 then you're going to click on the dead center and it should be 128 128 alright so there we go we've, we've preserved some of that color let's flatten that out duplicate the layer with control J let's do another stretch arc sign let's go 30 there we go let's flatten that out this to me is a good point to remove the light pollution that hazy brown that's all light pollution guys so what we're gonna do I've duplicated the layer we're going to click on the dropper we're gonna sample this color I usually do a 3x3 three three. you can do 5x5 five 3x3 five, three three average but we want the we want to sample that brown right there see that press alternate backspace you hold down alternate and press backspace and that paints that top layer that color of that yucky brown that comes from the light pollution and we're gonna subtract that from the background layer so we go to image apply image under blending tab you're gonna hit subtract I do an offset of 30 you can do 25 35 kinda of play around with that to your preference but 30 seems to work good for my preference so now we're gonna just discard that top layer and there we go look at that the light pollution has gone now let's look at levels again make sure we're where we need to be we can pull this slider back a little bit the data starts right there okay let's flatten that out duplicate that layer again alright let's do another stretch there's still plenty of room to stretch here we're gonna go arc sign 30 again alright we're starting to see some gradients and stuff coming out in this so now will be a good time to run that let's flatten the image let's duplicate the layer let's run the RC Astro gradient exterminator and get rid of some of these gradients we're gonna try just at medium medium and see what comes up and see how that handles it alright that did a pretty good job I don't know that it completely eliminated it but that that evened it out pretty well so let's run with that for now we may run another iteration of that I've flattened the image I'm duplicating the layer we gotta bring levels back here we go we don't want to clip any of the data alright so now's a good time to kinda crop and frame the image how you want to compose it something about like that right there is kinda what I'm going for alright let's duplicate it again and let's bring up the camera raw filter under filter okay and here we can see there's some luminance noise that needs to be dealt with and some color noise so we're going to soften that luminance noise and color noise there we go takes care of that now we're also going to do some another adjustment to color but again we don't want all this noise that's in the background to get amplified so we're going to do another star mask we're going to do another mask here go to color range and go to highlights and let's adjust the slider we want it to select a lot more than that bring the fuzziness down maybe right about there so it looks good there we go and we want it to, let's expand the selection so click on the lasso hold down the shift key and let's expand that selection around here so let's expand that layer doing select modify expand two pixels there we go and let's make a mask out of that let's take a look at that mask alright that looks pretty good there I think we're covering most of the stars and the main nebulosity here in the middle now we can go to camera off filter and any adjustments we make we make here are going are only going to adjust within this mask isn't that awesome so let's do a little vibe watch look you can see it's only adjusting stuff that are selected in the mask so we're gonna boost vibrance just a little bit color saturation just a little bit okay we don't want to go crazy with this just a little Uh, generally at, with this particular target I haven't messed a whole lot with texture clarity and dehaze with this part particular target look I mean it just I might add a little clarity but it does add noise so you gotta be careful with that 
Same with texture. Texture adds a ton, and it just blows out the stars. So let's just leave that alone with, with that for now. Okay. Let's flatten that out. Let's duplicate the layer again. And you can see there's still some weird, and some of this is stacking artifacts, guys. I had some Meridian flips. I did this over three different nights. There's just, there, you're going to wind up with some stacking artifacts here and there. So RC Astro is really the best way to handle this. I'm going to try another thing here. I'm going to select the nebula because I don't want it to mess with that so much. And we want it to feather. I'm going to go with 50 pixels. Go to select inverse. And we only want it to affect that area. Okay. Now let's run the RC Astro. Creating exterminator. Let's see what happens. There we go. So deselect. Look at that. That's helped knock out a lot of those gradients that were still lingering around. Love that plugin. It's awesome. All right, let's see what else can we do with this picture at this point. I think we can do one more stretch, but let's take a look at levels. There's not a whole lot of room to bring this back without clipping the data. We can go maybe right about here. Okay. Duplicate that layer and let's give it a stretch. I have a feeling this is going to overstretch, but let's just see what happens. We're going to do an arc sign 10, the lowest one. Yeah, so that is definitely the farthest I'm going to be able to take the stretching on this. And yeah, I can't even bring it back too much because it'll clip data and I don't want to clip precious data. Let's just bring it back to there and we'll use a mask to correct the rest of this. So here's what we're going to do. This is something I do sometimes in situations like this where the you can see there's some interstellar dust here. And there's a lot more actually, guys, that I can't bring out because my signal to noise ratio just wasn't that great. Uh, with only four hours of data and, you know, under less than ideal seeing and transparency conditions. And, of course, with a DSLR, there's just a lot of limitations you're dealing with here. But anyway, let's let's let me show you a little cool trick here. I don't think I've actually shown this one before, but this is something I've come up with just fiddling around and you'll kind of come up with your own tricks. But anyway, so what we we've duplicated a layer, right? Let's use a mask, go to color range. And we want to only darken the background. We don't want to mess with this nebula. We don't want to mess with the stars and darken them. So what we're going to do, that actually looks like a decent, we're going to stick with highlights. Sometimes I do sampled colors on this. Let's see what happens when we go to sampled colors. Okay. I think highlights might be a better choice here. Okay, we'll go to highlights. We're going to make a mask out of that. First, let's expand the selection. Hold shift. Make sure you have lasso activated. Hold shift. And let's expand that around that blue iris nebula. We don't want to lose any of that color. All right. So now we're going to make a mask. First, we're going to select inverse. Because we only want it to affect those areas that are not stars or the nebula. Take a look at this mask. Hold down alternate left click. The white is... The only areas are the only the white section is what will be corrected or adjusted. These stars in this nebula will not. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a gradient. So click on your gradient tab. Click on the color. Uh, we're going to go to kind of stick to the blue range, but the the main point here really is the gray. And you see how you can adjust the slider here. We want this at about. And this is something you're going to have to eyeball, guys, to get it to your taste. But essentially, we're wanting to try and clip out the noise, the bad stuff, while not affecting the good stuff. Okay, just to put it simply. So let's do that. Let's pull this gradient out on here and see what happens. And all I did is I held down left click, pulled on the side of the screen. There you go. We're going to change this layer, though, to soft light. Look at that. Boom. So before, after. Look at the before and after. It it just kind of clips out all the junk that 
is embedded in this image while pretty much leaving the nebula alone and the stars alone. You see the star color did not change at all. And the nebula actually kind of brought, was, there's a little more detail and, and brightness brought in the middle. So I'm good with that. Let's, lay, let's flatten that out. And that's really about it. I'm going to just leave this as it is. I think that's pretty good. It's not, it's not great, but it's pretty good. Again, it's, it's not what I expected uh, with the amount of data I've put into this. But um, from what I've seen online, this target really, you got to give it at least 8, 10 plus hours to do it justice. And uh, I think for me, because I want a closer up, I want something like this right here. And I'm going to have to use my RC to get that kind of focal length. So, but anyway, oops, let's undo that. Guys, that's it right there. We st you know, we still got some star colors, some blue and yellow and orange in the stars. And uh, there's a fair amount of detail coming through. But that's it. That's how I edited the Iris Nebula. Well, guys, that concludes the video for this evening. If you felt like you got something out of it, you enjoyed the video, whoop. Well, guys, that concludes the video for this evening. If you felt like you got something out of it and it was helpful and useful to you in any way, please give me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing if you'd like to see more content that I put out. And, and if you have any suggestions on this particular target using Photoshop, I'm totally open to it, would welcome it. So please fire away. Also wanna send a big thank you to all of you who continue to watch my videos and subscribe. I really appreciate the support. Also, if you're interested in any of the gear that I use or that I recommend, I've got some links in the description below to help get you started on the right foot. And as always guys, thanks for watching. God bless, keep looking up, keep on sinking. Until next time, clear skies.